Hey everyone. So I'm going to take some time in this video to go over the lesson on run on sentences and comma splices. Go ahead and pull up the handout. Okay. So in the previous lesson, we learned about sentence fragments, which are basically exactly what they sound like a fragment of a sentence, not a complete sentence. So in that lesson, we talked about how a sentence fragment is either missing the subject or the verb or possibly both. And it looks like a sentence. It's trying to function like a sentence, but it is technically not a complete sentence, right? So we talked about how to identify those, how to fix them, that sort of thing. Well, here in this lesson, we're looking at what is sort of the opposite of that problem, a run-on sentence is two independent clauses or two complete sentences that are fused together with nothing separating one sentence from the next, right? So whereas a fragment lacks a subject and or a verb, a run-on sentence has all of the elements needed to make it complete, but there's two or more complete sentences there and they're not separated like they should be. So I have some examples here. Sarah did a great job. She was promoted. You can see, if you look closely, we have Sarah did, subject and verb, a great job. That is one complete thought. She was promoted. That is another complete thought. So even though these are two short sentences, it is still two complete sentences that have simply been fused together. The first one, runs on into the second one, hence the term run on sentence. Another example, I got a speeding ticket last week, the cost of my insurance will probably go up. So we have one complete thought here. I got a speeding ticket last week. The cost of my insurance will probably go up. So this first sentence runs on into the second one. We have not separated these sentences like they should be. This example as well. My mother gave me permission. However, my father told me I could not use the car. So we have a complete thought here. My mother gave me permission. And then another complete thought here. However, my father told me I could not use the car. Right? So run on sentences. When you have two or more complete sentences that are fused together with nothing separating them. And we know, we know that when we get to the end of a sentence, we put a period and then we begin the next sentence. We know that there should be something separating the end of the first sentence from the beginning of the second sentence. A run-on sentence is when there is nothing there. The first sentence runs on into the second one. Now, we know if we come across run-on sentences, we know we can say to ourselves, okay, we know we're supposed to put a period at the end of the first sentence and then capitalize the first letter of the first word of the next sentence. But we also know that we want our sentences to be um, interesting. We want to have variety in our sentence structure. We don't want a bunch of short choppy sentences. So we know it's okay to combine sentences. So when we come across a run-on sentence and, you know, we're looking here, Sarah did a great job. She was promoted. Oh, I have a run-on sentence here. But these are two very short sentences. I don't want them to be two separate short sentences, one right after another. So I know I need to separate them somehow, but I don't really want to use a period. Hmm, maybe I'll just put a comma. No, you cannot do that because that is what we call a comma splice. So what is a comma splice? It is a special type of run-on sentence in which two independent clauses or two complete sentences are not separated by enough punctuation, but are instead spliced 
together by only a comma. So contrary to popular belief, a comma by itself is not strong enough to join together to complete sentences. And this happens so frequently in our writing. Um, not only do we tend to have comma splices naturally, like Sarah did a great job, comma, she was promoted. Like that might be how we originally wrote it. Maybe we never had it like this. Maybe it was never a, a, a run on sentence. Maybe we originally typed it like this. Sarah did a great job, comma, she was promoted. Or maybe we did write it like this to begin with, and we know we need to fix that run on, so we just add the comma. No, both, both are wrong. You cannot simply have a comma there separating those two complete sentences. The comma by itself is not strong enough. And this is the most common error in writing comma slices. We know we're supposed to have something separating two complete sentences. It is really not often unless we're just writing like in journal format where we're not having to worry about rules and things like that. Very rarely do we end up with a lot of straight run on sentences. What we mostly end up with are comma splices, which again is a run on sentence. A comma splice is still a run on because it's still one sentence running on into the next, being fused to the next without proper punctuation. A comma by itself cannot do the job. So I had those same three sentences that were sort of traditional run on sentences up here. I've showed you what they looked like as comma splices. Sarah did a great job, comma, she was promoted. I got a speeding ticket last week, comma, the cost of my insurance will probably go up. My mother gave me permission, comma, however, my father told me I could not use the car. Each of these, right here, right here, and right here, those commas, those are all comma splices, and all three of them are wrong. All three of those are grammatic, grammatical errors. They need to still be fixed. So you have two scenarios in which you might come across this type of general error. You have a straight traditional run-on sentence like these up here, and you have comma splices like these down here. Sometimes this is what we write to begin with, and then we know it needs to be fixed, and we try to fix it by doing this, but that's not a fix. This is still wrong. Sometimes this is how we write it to begin with, and it's wrong. So how do we fix these errors? Well, the most obvious correction would be to create two separate sentences. If we know we have a run-on or comma splice, where we've got one complete sentence going into the next sentence with either nothing separating them or only a comma separating them, why not just put a period at the end of the first one, capitalize the first letter of the first word of the next one? So here's how our errors would look if we corrected them in that manner. Sarah did a great job, period. She was promoted. Oops, I got my period there, right? I got a speeding ticket last week, period. The cost of my insurance will probably go up. My mother gave me permission, period. However, my father told me I could not use the car, right? So that is an acceptable way of fixing a run-on, or comma splice. Now, is that the best way to fix these errors? Sometimes, yeah, it's a perfectly fine, good choice. But if you are prone to having a lot of run-on sentences or comma splices in your writing, 
then this is not the way that you want to fix every single one of those errors. Because if you do that, if your way of correcting a run-on sentence or comma splice is to always just create two separate sentences, you're going to end up with a bunch of short, choppy sentences. And there will be no coherence to your writing because you're not connecting any of your ideas. We don't really know. Sarah did a great job. She was promoted. Okay, why, why did you tell me that first idea and then follow it up with that second idea? How are they connected? So that is one reason why you want this first option to be sort of your last resort. Even though I've listed it first, I've listed it first because it's the easiest way, <laughs> um, the most, you know, the one that would come to mind first more than likely. But just because it's the easiest way to fix a run on or comma splice does not mean it's the best way. So another way that we can resolve these errors is to use a semicolon. And remember, when we went through the useful words for grammar and mechanics lesson, I talked a little bit about semicolons. And I said a semicolon is used to connect two complete sentences that are so closely related that you want them to remain together as one technically grammatically correct sentence. But you have to have a complete sentence on both sides of the semicolon. Well, if we have a run-on sentence or a comma splice, we know we have two complete sentences there. We can use a semicolon to separate them. So a comma by itself is not strong enough, but a semicolon is. So you could put, Sarah did a great job, semicolon, she was promoted. I got a speeding ticket last week, semicolon, the cost of my insurance will probably go up. My mother gave me permission, semicolon. However, my father told me I could not use the car. Okay, semicolon works. But again, is it always the best option to fix these errors? No. You don't want to overuse that type of punctuation mark. So again, if you are prone to having a lot of run-on sentences or comma splices in your writing, you don't want to fix every one of them by simply plugging in a semicolon. It will get repetitive. And again, you aren't necessarily creating coherence among your thoughts if you continually use that semicolon. The best time to use the semicolon is when you have a conjunctive adverb like this, however. If you remember the list of conjunctive adverbs, however, therefore, thus, consequently, otherwise, likewise, those words show the relationship between the ideas. So you can use the semicolon and still have coherence still show your reader how that first thought leads to the second thought. And the semicolon works because you've got two complete sentences on either side. Okay. A third way of correcting a run-on sentence or comma splice does involve a comma, but it is not a comma by itself. It is a comma with a coordinating conjunction. And again, going back to the useful words for grammar and mechanics, there are seven coordinating conjunctions, and, but, or, for, nor, so, and yet. If you are using one of those words, you can, you would use it with the comma. So obviously, if you have a comma splice, one easy way to try to fix that is to think, okay, is there a coordinating conjunction that I can use with this comma that makes sense? Because remember, there's only seven of those coordinating conjunctions. And so not every single um, progression of thought can be represented by one of those seven. Sometimes none of them work. None of them make sense. So 
But if they do make sense, if one of them does make sense, then you can use it with the comma. So I have, again, our three errors in how to use the comma with the coordinating conjunction. Sarah did a great job, comma, and she was promoted. Okay, that makes sense. We have the comma with the coordinating conjunction, and the coordinating conjunction we've used makes sense given how this first thought leads to the second thought. Or, I got a speeding ticket last week, comma, so the cost of my insurance will probably go up. Again, we've got a comma with the coordinating conjunction, so we're good there. And the coordinating conjunction we've used makes sense given how this first thought leads to the second thought. Our third example. That third example already has that conjunctive adverb. So again, I actually wouldn't change it. I would use this, the semicolon method when you have a conjunctive adverb involved. But just to show you what it would be like to fix it with a comma and coordinating conjunction, it would be this. My mother gave me permission, comma, but my father told me I could not use the car. Again, comma with a coordinating conjunction. The coordinating conjunction makes sense logically given how these two thoughts are connected. The fourth and final way that you can fix a comma slice or run on sentence is probably the most elevated. It is the one that will create the big, the more, the most variety in your writing and um, show more complexity of thought. This is the one you want to practice and get better at. And remember, subordinating conjunctions, um, we talked about those in the useful words lesson. Subordinating conjunctions take a complete sentence and turn it into a dependent clause that must be connected to a complete sentence. So that's how the fourth way that you can fix a run-on sentence or comma slice is to create a dependent clause by using a subordinating conjunction, and then the sentences can remain connected, right? Because Sarah did a great job, she was promoted. We can keep the comma there now, since we've used this subordinating conjunction. We turned this complete sentence, Sarah did a great job, into an incomplete sentence by adding the word because. Because Sarah did a great job, it has to be connected now to something complete. She was promoted. Or, the cost of my insurance will probably go up because I got a speeding ticket last week. You can switch it. I know in the original part about getting the speeding ticket came first. So you could say, because I got a speeding ticket last week, the cost of my insurance will probably go up. It can now stay connected since you have used the subordinating conjunction. All right, we had, you know, my mother gave me permission. However, my father told me I could not use the car. Although my mother gave me permission, my father told me I could not use the car. That is the best way to practice correcting run-on sentences and comma slices because it allows you to create variety in your sentence structure but also ensures that the connection among the ideas is clear. It creates very strong coherence. Whereas the other, like creating two separate sentences, that is going to, that's risky because then you may lose coherence. Using a semicolon, same thing. It, it might, not show how your ideas are connected, how one leads to the next. A comma and a coordinating conjunction, that's okay. That, that usually creates coherence. It usually shows the relationship among your ideas. 
But remember, there's only seven of them. And so it's very possible that none of those seven will work to show how your ideas are connected. And again, for variety's sake, you don't want to always use a comma with a coordinating conjunction. You want to get better at the method of correction that takes a little more work, but has a much stronger effect. All right. Let's take a look at some examples here. All right. This is a fairly new product, therefore, some people don't trust it. All right. So you have to think about do we hear two complete thoughts here? This is a fairly new product. Therefore, some people don't trust it. So what we have here is a comma splice because the first sentence ends after the word product. The second sentence begins with the word therefore. And all we have separating them is this tiny little comma that's not strong enough to do this job. So we would need to fix that. All right. Efforts are being made to halt water pollution. However, there is no simple solution to the problem. Again, we've got efforts are being made to halt water pollution. However, there is no simple solution to the problem. Two complete sentences with just this little tiny comma trying to connect them, but it's not strong enough. So number one and number two here are comma slices. Number three, Bill slept through his final exam. He had forgotten to set his alarm. All right? Bill slept through his final exam. He had forgotten to set his alarm. So we have a run-on sentence right here. Ellen must be a genius. She never studies yet always gets A's. Ellen must be a genius. She never studies yet always gets A's. Again, we have a little tiny comma trying to connect them. Comma slice. Judy leads a charmed life. She never seems to have a serious accident. Judy leads a charmed life. She never seems to have a serious accident. A run on sentence. First sentence runs right on into the second. Throughout history, money and religion were closely linked. There was little distinction between government and religion. Throughout history, money and religion were closely linked. There was little distinction between government and religion. Little tiny comma, trying to connect these two complete sentences. Not strong enough, we have a comma slice. The head of state and the religious leader were often the same person. All power rested in one ruler. The head of state and the religious leader were often the same person. All power rested in one ruler. Run on sentence. These powerful leaders decided what objects would serve as money. Their backing encouraged public faith in money. These powerful leaders decided what objects would serve as money. Their backing encouraged public faith in money. Coins were printed of precious metals. The religious overtones of money were then strengthened. Coins were minted of precious metals. The religious overtones of money were then strengthened. Little comma trying to connect them. Not strong enough. We have a comma slice. People already believed the precious metals to be divine, using them to make coins and pensified monies a lure. People already believed the precious metals to be divine, using them to make coins and pensified monies a lure. With a little tiny comma trying to do the job. Can't do it. It's a comma slice. So we had a variety here. We had a, some comma slices, some straight run ons. But every single one of these, all 10 of them, are wrong, and they need to be fixed. So down here under the answer section, I have showed you and given a little bit of an explanation how to fix each one. So our first one was, 
This is a fairly new product, therefore some people don't trust it. If you remember up above, we had said we have a comma splice here because we have, this is a fairly new product, therefore some people don't trust it. Two complete sentences with just this little tiny comma trying to connect them, right? We know that the comma is not strong enough. We know this needs to be fixed. What is the best way to fix it? Well, since we already have that conjunctive adverb right there, the best way to fix this would simply be to change this comma to a semicolon. This is a fairly new product, semicolon. Therefore, some people don't trust it. Same thing with the second one. We already have the conjunctive adverb here. So why not just make this comma a semicolon? Shows the relationship, easy fix. We haven't lost any of the meaning. We haven't lost any coherence. We haven't ended up with short choppy sentences. When you have the conjunctive adverb, it's 99% of the time gonna be fine to use the semicolon. The only caveat to that would be if you tend to use conjunctive adverbs a lot, and then you still end up with a bunch of semicolons. And yes, it's, it's technically correct, but if that's the way you are structuring your sentences all through your writing, the writing is going to get a little monotonous and repetitive. So you do wanna keep that in mind if you like to use the semicolon and conjunctive adverb combo, right? Um, Bill slept through his final exam. He had forgotten to set his alarm. So this is a run-on sentence because we have Bill slept through his final exam and it runs right into he had forgotten to set his alarm. So what's the best way to fix this one? I've showed you all four methods here. Bill slept through his final exam, period. He had forgotten to set his alarm. Bill slept through his final exam, semicolon. He had forgotten to set his alarm. These two are the easiest fixes, but those are not the ones you wanna go for first. You either want the comma with the coordinating conjunction, Bill slept through his final exam, comma, for he had forgotten to set his alarm, or you wanna go for using a subordinating conjunction to create a dependent clause. Bill slept through his final exam because he had forgotten to set his alarm. Okay, so you can go ahead and go through the rest of them, and same deal, I've kind of given a little explanation and then showed you um, all four methods of correction. For almost all of them, you want to avoid these two right away, right? You certainly want this. This is really just creating two separate sentences is really not the way to go unless you've got one long sentence that runs into a second longer sentence. If both of those sentences are, are pretty lengthy, then yeah, going ahead and using the period and having two completely separate sentences is fine. But if you've got shorter sentences, you don't just wanna constantly put a period and fix it that way. Because again, it's just it's not the most effective way. Um, semicolons, great to use with conjunctive adverbs. Comma with a coordinating conjunction, very good way to fix these, except you only have seven to choose from, and it might be that none of them actually work logically. Fourth method, using a subordinating conjunction to create a dependent clause. Best way to go most of the time because it allows for more variety in your writing and you are less likely to forsake coherence when you're correcting these types of errors. So in the homework assignment um, for this week, uh, well, not really, just in general, you know, when you come across a run-on sentence where one sentence runs right into the next, the main thing you want to remember is this. I have an error here. I need to fix it, but I cannot simply put in a comma because then I have a comma splice, which is just a special type of run-on sentence, so I really haven't fixed the error at all. 
I have simply replaced it with a more specialized error. <laughs> so that is what I want you to keep in mind as you um, continue writing and practicing these things, um, working on the draft of your assignment. You know, you just don't simply throw in a comma. Uh, now, having said all of that, it, are, are, are we going to become masters of this right away where we can write something and just immediately feel confident that we won't have any run-on sentences or comma slices? No. Even seasoned writers can end up with these errors the first time around. You want to learn more about these errors and practice with them more though so that you can spot them in your writing. Once you have gone through the whole revision process and it's time to proofread your writing, you want to make sure that you can spot run-on sentences and comma slices and know how to fix them. Or if you have someone else take a look at it for you and they are saying, you know, you've got a run-on sentence here, a comma slice there, a comma slice there, Maybe you didn't pick up on it, you know, when you read through it. But at the very least, if someone else points it out, you'll know how to fix it. At least. So this isn't necessarily, grammar and mechanics is not necessarily something that you have to um, envision yourself being a master of. Maybe you will. Hopefully you'll at least get better. But the, truly, the important thing is knowing that these errors exist. Run-on sentences and comma slices especially are two of the most common. And if you have a if you have a tendency to have a lot of these in your writing, then you either need to get better at proofreading your own writing or say, you know, I know I have these errors, but for whatever reason, I have a really hard time finding them. Maybe I should have someone else take a look at it for me to help me proofread, help me find the errors. And once they have been found, whether by myself or someone helping me, I also know how to fix them now. That's what we want. It's really just being able to hopefully identify them, but definitely be able to fix them. If you have any questions about run-on sentences and comma slices, please reach out. Again, it's such a common error, and I know it's a new one. Sometimes, especially comma slices, it's not something that students have really learned about for whatever reason. I was a junior in college as an English major, a junior in college before anyone ever told me what a comma slice was. Kept having this one, one particular professor who kept marking things on my paper. She'd circle a comma and write CS next to it. And it took me until the third paper before I finally had the guts to ask her, what does this mean? <laughs> and lo and behold, it's something that I was that I should have known about. Um, we don't, I don't know why, but it's a pretty common error, one that might be new to you. So if you still have questions after going through the lesson, definitely reach out. Otherwise, you're free to go ahead and move on to the next thing.